So normally when I do a games drama YouTube video, I feel like I need to sort of amp it up for the viewer to be informative, but also engaging and entertaining. And today I'm sort of in this weird state where I don't need to do any of that because I'm honestly so shocked and so angered that my mind is genuinely blown. So, so, so there's been some drama involving unity that has blown my absolute mind but I think we need to take a few seconds to step back and explain how I think we got to this point and what the drama is. So it's no secret that in the eyes of gamers, indie studios have been outperforming AAA studios for cost, efficiency, and overall delivery for the end user, especially given the price of the games, for quite some years now. And one of the main platforms upon which games have done that is the Unity Engine. For those of you that aren't super into the space, the Unity Engine is that game engine that most of the indie games you've probably ever played were made on. I would list games that have been made on the Unity Engine, but they're too numerous to mention. Just check it out for yourself. For followers of this channel, probably the most notable one would be the Pillars of Eternity series. So it's safe to say in the war of small studios to create good games against big corporate entities, Unity has been that shining light, that thing that's enabled so many people to create games that we've loved and enjoyed. And that's now coming to an end in the most dramatic way possible. So let's say you're a very cynical operator. You're the Sam Bankman Freed of gaming engines, allegedly. And you're thinking, hey, most indie games, mobile games in the world use our little engine. How could we make more money? And how could we burn down any shred of reputation we have in the process? Well, we're about to find out how you do that. It was reported by Yahoo Finance that CEO of Unity, John Riccatello, shifted over 2,000 shares on September 6th and the week following. Now, if you ever want evidence, allegedly, that a CEO might be allegedly, allegedly, allegedly about to do something bad to the company they run, them selling their shares in that company is pretty darn good evidence of that. Of course you can prove all of this. The absolute crazy that Unity has recently announced in terms of their payment system. So the TLDR here is that Unity is about to install DRM software on every version of Unity that is going to collect data from you on whether or not you've installed or uninstalled the game and then charge the indie developer, oh well, not always indie, but often indie developer that you support money for those installs and uninstalls. It sounds insane, I can't believe I can't believe I'm saying I can't believe I'm making this video. I feel like I'm in an alternate reality today. I didn't get any sleep, but it's just, it's insane. Anyways, back to the video. So I first got turned on to one of the YouTubers I follow, Lost Relic Games, who's a great YouTuber and game designer. And but I I still thought from the title of the video, it's, it's clickbait. I'm click anyways, but it's not. And I'm going to show some clips from his video that uh, really are him as a Unity dev describing how this change will affect him. And uh, I'll link his video below. Subscribe to him. He's, he's a nice guy. He's got great hair. Unity has measures in place. I'm not sure I would feel ever satisfied that there's nothing sliding through the cracks. And that's... And Unity responds, we leverage our own proprietary data model. We believe it gives an accurate determination of the number of times the runtime is distributed for a given project. And you could start charging a game developer by running a script or a hack that kind of flags an install or deinstall. I mean, on a basic level, you could just keep uninstalling and reinstalling a game of someone you hate or whatever, you get all your friends to do it. And every time you do that, the developer has to pay 20 cents. And if it's like a <laughs> coordinated strike, that could be quite disastrous. Calling home whenever it's run, even for enterprise licenses. So this is interesting because, you know, if you're an enterprise organization with millions of users and massive amounts of turnover, 
it's a bit uncomfortable to know that your app is actually, you know, sending data packets back and forth to Unity. It's very important to know what data is going in and out of your um, app and try to, you know, uh, avoid security breaches. So yeah, I can understand that. Normally that's kind of an opt-in situation. And Unity responds, we use a composite model for counting runtime installs that collects data from numerous sources. The Unity runtime fee will still use data in compliance with GDRP and CCPA. The data is being requested, is aggregated and is being used for billing purposes. Now that's what you call a politician's answer. Now there's probably untold ways that this may affect game developers um, from being able to monetize games, being able to know how long their games will stay up, especially being able to provide pro prolonged support for those games if people are messing around with them. But in this video, I want to continue now that we've gotten to where the drama is sort of at what this means for consumers, because other than making I, I think the last game I made was a cute frog that ate flies. It made me happy. I'm not a game developer. I'm a hobbyist at best. At best, I'm a game developer hobbyist. But from a consumer perspective, and that's what I care about on this ch channel, I, I care about a consumer perspective on gaming. I think this is going to be as disastrous for consumers as it is for Unity devs. And I'm going to touch on some points that were already made in those clips I showed but also just go into more detail myself on how I think this is. This is AAA developers turning around and to use a nerdy reference, this is the Battle of Hoth, right? This is when AAA devs and their pricing model turn around on indie studios and say, I am your father. We will own you. We will keep this model going. We will monetize you out of existence if you refuse to match the business model that we want you to have. No more little studios having big success anymore. So the most notable one is that if you, you know, pay attention to Steam reviews, you'll notice that there are games on Steam that if they are caught collecting user data will be immediately vote bombed, mass uninstalled, and the game will die. This is, happens particularly to many games with anti-cheat or anti-botting uh, software that come out of China because people do not necessarily trust anti-botting software to be installed on their computer to monitor what they do by the Communist Party of China. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you can see how they, got, how they got to that thought. But if Unity follow through with this, well, the same thing is going to happen to every Unity runtime-based game on the on the system. Will it be as restrictive as de novo or some kind of Chinese anti-cheat? Probably not, no. But it'll still be calling for your software configuration. It will create a checksum based around that, and it will be sending that back, catched in a file, to Unity. Every time you uninstall a game and what hard drive you uninstalled it on or to and where it is installed a lot of people are not going to be okay with that and they might be ignoring this drama now while it's a drama that's panicking developers but it will be a drama that will eventually panic consumers because you know what if you're out to make money and you're going to make money this cynically then who knows where you'll stop it's just an undeniable reality that most people that have ever played a mobile game probably have a Unity runtime engine installed on their mobile phone. And this ability to leverage data is just, it's a reality. But that probably isn't the worst thing. The worst thing is that it A, reeks of trying to make money in the worst way possible, especially as he points out in his video, that this will be leveraged backwards on old games. Anyone remember the old original uh, licensed uh, Unity games like Thomas Was Alone? Imagine being the guy that makes Thomas Was Alone. It's like, oh, I'm just making Thomas Was Alone. I've got my little shapes and things and they're going around on the screen. And now he's going to get a huge bill for everybody that re-downloads Thomas Was Alone. I don't even want to re-download that game now. I'm scared of charging him the two cents. What if we all did it? What if I created a video 
that went viral on YouTube that was called Thomas Was Alone as the Greatest Indie Game of All Time, and it happened to go viral, and a bunch of people who already own that game because it, for people that like indie games, it was very well sold, very well distributed. Um, it's on multiple st- uh, platforms as well, for which he's probably not being paid at this point, just decided to download Thomas Was Alone. This is the most anti-consumerist move in the history of gaming in terms of indie gaming that I've seen, in terms of empowering uh, large companies to monetize products and damaging consumers and developers of games. I want to let that sit for a second. I, I really don't feel that I'm being hyperbolic about this. I really hope that YouTubers, because all all of the coverage that I'm seeing at this point is within the game developer space, and I I sincerely hope that gaming that that YouTubers that are way 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 bigger than me pick this up and it's talked about. I hope that people like Moist Critical and Some Ordinary Gamer and ever ever this gets picked up by everybody because it has to be because this is one of those grounds that you have to fight on in order to maintain consumer integrity the lives of indie developers it's also a great advert for godot as which is a smaller gaming engine if you don't follow that space but all of those those memes are great within the within the developer space but from a consumer perspective this is clearly big capital cracking down on the indie game experience and Everybody has to fight this point. And it's very difficult to because they say, oh, yeah, we'll boycott Unity. Well, all we're doing then is ruining the lives of indie developers that have spent their lives developing Unity games. There's no easy way out of this, but one thing people can do is spread awareness. So sorry for a slightly different video on this channel, um, but I mean, it's not different. It's just darker uh, and more honest, maybe. <laughs> but this is this is this is really, really bad. And um, if you can do anything about it to spread awareness, get this as big on the YouTubes as possible. Like and subscribe. I mean, the subscribe is for me. But like to just get this. This stuff needs to trend more and more so it picks up with the bigger YouTubers. And we need a whole community fight against this. That That's the only way we're going to force any kind of change here if it's even possible. And uh, with that, um, yeah, peace. See you in the next video.